Students are fleeing the rental market. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Got my morning shine of coffee. It's a bit warmer here in Queensland, or maybe I'm just getting up a bit later today. And I thought we'd start the day by having a look at this article from the Australian Financial Review discussing students fleeing the rental market. Now, we've looked at this very recently with a business that has gone under here in Australia and taken a whole lot of students' deposits with them and rental payments. Landlords are suffering, the real owners, and the students are suffering. It's going to do brand damage to Australia. I imagine it'll have an effect on these investment properties over time, over time, seeing how it's going. But here's the one thing, you know, they're some of these businesses purely exist as literal rent seekers between one party and another, taking advantage of the cultural differences between international students and the Australian culture, and just skimming a bit off the top. Surely that's a market you could replace with an app. Anyway, let's have a look at this article, everyone. So the rental market hit by a student exodus. Financial review rich lister... Tim Gunner called state and federal government's treatment of foreign students the most insane thing he has ever seen in his career, as he warned of the impact on rental markets and property values. Well, see, this is what it always comes back to. This is it. It's everything is just building towards lifting up this property market, propping up this property market. I'm definitely not very optimistic at the moment. The economic shock is coming. It won't bypass us. Mr. Gunnar said. As part of a property webinar that included Melbourne Lord Mayor Sally Cap, fund manager Shane Quinn, and uh, vicinity centre's head of development Caroline Vinnie. Well, yeah, we, we are definitely in for a shock, even though the market has bounced back a little bit. We'll have to see. I'm hearing that all the, all the larger sellers are stepping back. Just look at what happened to Hertz, guys. The significant number of sales that came from retail buyers or significant number of buyers that came from retail traders into Hertz when the mark was, market had apparently depressed the value. Look at them all now. This is before it went under. If cities such as Melbourne wanted to bring back people to their CBD, Mr. Gunnar said, they needed Chinese students. Well, yes, Australian education, university education is heavily dependent on international students guides and i'm just looking for a chart over here to bring up to show you just the dependency that we have on international students it's quite concerning and here we go you can see here these are our, our universities we've got sydney melbourne monash university of new south wales and uq all of them well over half a billion dollars of their com their income is coming from international students over half a billion dollars everyone so that's definitely definitely a dependence on international student education and uh, well i feel sorry for them actually i really do i definitely feel sorry for some of these students just the quality education they're getting Man, that's my own bias coming through they're sitting next to a, a chinese malay friend of mine at university and he was opening up his book and he's saying this lecture is exactly the same as what this lecture this lecture gave last semester, and I'm paying thousands and thousands of dollars for this. They contribute forty billion dollars a year, and we're just letting them go. That's the problem. We've become dependent on international students. We didn't support them. We told them to go home. It's just the most insane thing I've ever seen in my career, without a doubt. He told an Australian Israeli Chamber of Commerce property webinar. We have treated immigrants, which drive the residential market, like the second cousin when they've built our economy and built our cities for the last 5 to 10 or even 20 years. I mean, here's the thing, guys. International students, it's a pathway to immigration. And generally, the type of citizens that you want in, in the civilization, as long as they're, they're to a useful degree. I mean, we've got enough, um, you know, arts majors with feminine, feminine studies like uh, Ford. An exodus of students drove a tripling of residency vacancy rates in the inner cities of inner city of Melbourne in April, according to new figures 
published by the Melbourne City Council. So a tripling of residential vacancy rates. So <laughs> here's the question, guys. Is this huge number of international students coming in here putting a pressure on residential rates for rents in cities, perhaps? Will this market adjust? How will this... See, this is the thing. It feels like a Ponzi scheme. This is just more and more of the the fact that we've got a property bubble, a property bubble, and it's riding on the back of immigration. And other parts of the civilization haven't kept up. Our water infrastructure hasn't kept up. Our, well, our power infrastructure, particularly in Victoria, it's so dependent on intermittent resources that power is getting much more expensive. The rental market had taken a massive hit. It's my biggest concern, he said. He said rents had fallen between 10 and 30 percent, which if sustained would impact residential values. Well, there we go. We're getting property spruikers talk up the market. Now's the time to get in. You're getting FOMO articles left, right and center from different players. And everyone has all these people. The more you read, and the more you see. It's not like academia. They don't need to declare their potential bias or conflict of interest. I'm used to watching, you know, lectures from low carb down under, particularly when we went on this keto carnivore phase. And every time they'd get up, they'd walk up and they'd go, <coughs> I'm a doctor, such and such. These are my interests. This is it. I receive royalties from this book. I have this system or, you know, they come up. I have no conflicts of interest. They would declare, they would publicly declare their potential biases or conflicts of interest, which I thought was fantastic. We need that in these type of articles and journalism articles. We need that for every time someone spruker goes on the news. But why don't, let's ditch these, these stupid made up, you know, welcome ceremonies and all that rubbish. Let's get our politicians declaring their conflicts of interest every time they come and hand out, you know, a sports grant. Oh, I, I <clears throat> you know, rocking up. Hello, citizens, I'm such and such, and I need this seat to win my election. So here's all this free stuff. Will that shatter the, uh, the fantasy that people have? Anyway, I'm going off topic. Back to the article. So we've just completed 140 apartments with 100 of them in the landing pool. I mean, oh boy, buying one of these apartments, guys. This is the thing. You just want, you're literally buying a copy of every, literally, down to the fixtures and fittings, a copy of every other apartment in these complexes. And if you're targeting student, you know, student accommodation, that market's going to take a hit. And there's going to be calls for it to come back. The university sector is going to suffer. And probably it's probably time it did suffer a little bit. You know, there's a lot of fat in universities, guys. Well, no, I'm not going to call it fat. I like fat. A lot of carbs in universities, guys, that need to be thrown out. We'd normally lease them all in two hours with one inspection. We've leased half of them in six weeks, he said. Okay, so <clears throat> he's got to experience a bit of a tough time, a challenge. Maybe he needs to try and differentiate his product a little bit. I'm not feeling sorry for this situation. Am I, am I alone, guys? Mr. Gunnar said his own staff had taken pay cuts, while other builders and developers were dropping staff left, right, and center due to a lack of work. Ms. Cap said her biggest priority was to bring people back to the center of Melbourne and reactivate its offices, shops, cafes, bars, and restaurants. The city is the place where people come together. Our economy is based around the city, being a meeting and gathering place. Well, this is going to change. This is, we're going to see this flow through to the demand for re retail spaces to rent. We're going to see this change in the demand for commercial spaces. I've got a, a work meeting later today I'm going to organize with six different consultants, and we're just going to do it online. We're just going to do it online. If anything, this whole you know lockdown has really forced me to embrace these digital meetings a lot more. You know, for a, a young millennial, I've got six computer screens here. I've got all this tech. I've, you know, we've got we're one of the first. I think we probably would have been one of the first architecture firms in Brisbane to invest in point cloud scanning technology. You know, and yet I, I still prefer face to face meetings. See, I'm a boomer at heart. You bastards that keep teasing me. Mr. Quinn, founder of fund manager Quincential Equity, said he was absolutely sure people would return and inhabit office buildings, which would be better designed in the future. He added that a fall in office values would create buying opportunities. 
There is pain and suffering coming for those who bought B-grade office buildings at $20,000 a square meter. Now, with commercial buildings, they've got different grades. And the higher the grade, I think it's a triple A. I haven't looked at it in a while. It's been a couple of years since we've we've dealt with this level of commercial buildings. But we had a client that had high B-grade that wanted to lift it up. And we ended up putting an end trip facility in there, a gymnasium in there, and all these other uh, facilities into the building, upgrading the fixtures and fittings to really get it to that next level. So A grade building, they need to have like generators and all these other things in the building to get these grades. And so you've got different occupancy rates in different buildings or different categories of buildings in different cities. So yeah, if you bought B grade, which is, you know, it's not like second best, it's like pretty average. There's like three different grades of A or something. You know, there's A triple plus and AA and A. You'd, you'd be pretty down the pool, particularly for that much a square meter. So, <clears throat> so there's an opportunity, guys, looking at upgrading these type of this type of stock. I think there's definitely definitely going to be change to the commercial sector, and he's, this uh, Mr. Quinn is suggesting they'll be buying opportunities, but there'll also be opportunities for those of us that work in the construction sector for refurbishment and upgrade of some of this stock because they'll need to do it to attract tenants. Let me know if you're in the game, guys, and you start to see get inquiries. They need to demonstrate to the banks they can hold rents, but they can't. It will be like trying to catch a falling knife. So there may be more opportunities. Well, I had a, a viewer tell me, you know, he's working for a big firm, you know, big engineering firm, and they're doing a refurb for a client. That client had 20,000 square meters. They cut down to 4,000. What does that tell you? Miss Vinny said the pandemic had focused attention on the design and use of office space. She said space owned by vicinity in Melbourne CBD had recently come back for lease courtesy of Myers rationalization. This space, she said, had drawn amazing levels of interest from co-working and smaller office users because there were lots of escalators running through the building rather than access by lift. We may not even need to use a leasing agent, Miss Vinny said. Oh, <laughs> I mean, converting a Maya, an empty Maya shell into a co-working space. That's going to be a lot of fit out that you'd have to spend. My biggest concern with that is just, I'm just thinking of acoustics, guys. I'm just thinking of how horrible the acoustics would be working there. So there you have it, guys. International students fleeing the property sector hurting the rental market. There'll be you know, flow-ons onto other parts of the sector as well that they're saying here, and some potential opportunities. What do you all think? Have you invested in one of these properties? Are you worried? Or are you in the construction game looking at opportunities that could appear on the horizon? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you'd like to support the work I do, you can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. Support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or independent reserve and KuCoin, buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.